Okay, we got it. I got to turn it around, right? All right, I think I got it. Thanks, Jen. All right, no problem. Bye. Bye. All right, is that? Can you see it? Yeah. I don't think it sees anybody. Yeah, I can see you. Okay. I could put this, but if I go like this, there's nobody on it. I'm just gonna put it on them. Okay, it's recording now. It is recording now. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, we're a little late because we have some technical difficulties, but we're okay now. <laughs> Seven ten. Five ten. Five ten. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Okay, roll call, Frank. Yep. Ann. Here. A. Here. Me. Tina. Me. And Julia. Okay. Um, we have approval of the March 20 minutes. Is there any additions or corrections? I'll make motion to approve the minutes as well. Oh, okay. second. No additions or corrections. Very good. Um, we have no audience of citizens, so that's too bad. Oh, here we come to my favorite part, the election of all. <laughs> um, we have to do the election of officers because we were, we, the January meeting we uh, canceled because of the weather. So, and we didn't do it last time, so in March, so we have to do that today. Um, can we postpone it until we get a new member? So can we do election boxes if we don't have a quorum? Well, you have a quorum. We have a quorum. We just can't vote on it. No, you can because you have a quorum. You have four out of five, so that's a quorum. I don't know if you could put it off until you get a new member because. You don't know how long that's going to take. What do you mean? Uh, to fill Lois's spot. Oh, yeah. No, I have no idea. So I would vote on it today. Okay. So we just need to have a, someone to nominate for. Do I have a nomination for? You can't. Yeah. I know you can't. One of they have to. Yeah, I'll nominate Barbara Fury, depending on your here. Amy. I said. Okay. Now I know I say this all the time. If anybody prefers to do this, I would be very happy to turn the day chair over. All right. So Frank nominated her. We have a second. And then Barbara has to accept, correct? She has to let us know that she's willing to do it. Yeah. Okay. I will do it because no one else wants to. Okay. So now you have a vote. Um, We're all in favor. Yes. In favor. All in favor. Yeah, I should have Opposed. it. Yeah. Opposed. Okay. And now we need an assistant chair. So someone has to make the yeah, nomination. Nominate. And Frank has been our assistant right along. So we need to have a nomination unless somebody else wants to do it. We need to nominate Frank. I'll nominate Frank. Okay. Like Frank. <laughs> All right. So there's a nomination for Frank for vice president. And then there needs to be a second. Is there a second? Second. Okay. And then there all needs approved. to be all in favor. All in favor. <clears throat> oh, do you accept? Yeah, accept. Okay. <laughs> all in favor. Uh -huh. 
Kay nominated and Ann second. Carla, moving on. Okay. Senior Center Director's Report, Tina. Okay. So, um, do you have to? Do you have one, Kay? Or do I have one? Do you have one of my reports? No. Oh, okay. Just share with one lady for now, and then I'll give you one. Okay. Um, so I I put that our average daily attendance uh, to show you um, our average per weekday, how many folks we're getting. Um, average per day by month. This was March, April, and May from our last meeting. So our attendance is up there. I think that's a good attendance per, per day. Um, our transportation service requests have increased. Uh, we are providing transportation currently to 116 individuals. Uh, we have transported them to 95 different locations and we have provided 2,846 rides and some of those might be like duplicate, but from January to today. And those are usually one, like one way trips. So um, we are providing a lot of transportation. We've seen a, a, a big increase. Um, especially now that we're servicing, um, providing service to other areas, mm -hmm. other towns than just New Britain and Berlin for medical. Um, we're going to Plainville, Southington, uh, Cromwell, Rocky Hill, Weathersfield, Newington, um, Farmington, um, but we keep it within a certain radius of the towns that are around us. And do they have to do it on a certain day? No. No. So they Only to... within a certain time frame. Okay. We tell them that the earliest that we can get them to an appointment is 9 a.m. The latest we would like them to make an appointment is 2.15. But in some cases, if we're going out of town, we ask them to make their medical by 1 o'clock because they have to have their call in for a return ride by 3, 3.30 the latest in order for our driver to get them, transport them home, and in order for him to be able to clock out on time because there is no overtime. Um, and also with my per diem drivers, I have to keep them within a certain amount of hours um, each week. They can only, they're supposed to only drive 22 or less hours a week. That's for the town. How many drivers do you have now? Three. Three per diem, one full-time driver. So we have four drivers and we have, I mean, we have four vehicles, but we mainly use the two buses and the van. But if one of the vehicles is out, we use the car as well. And we've had some, like bus two right now is in the garage. So we've only can use three vehicles. We've also had where our per diem drivers, you know, are out, whether they're sick or they're on vacation. So we've had to um, decline people rights, but it doesn't happen that often. Um, and most people are very understanding. We do the best we can with, you know, with what we have at the time. So, um, and we really don't have any issues with um, our riders. And when we do, I address it with the person right away. You've got quite a range of pounds to right. Knock people off. Right, right. But I'm saying if we have an issue with a rider, you know, we tell them to be ready an hour before. And we when we mean ready, not meaning waiting outside, mm -hmm. but that they're dressed, they've had their breakfast, lunch, they're ready to go. Because sometimes the drivers have to might double up on riders because they're either going to the same location or they're in the same vicinity and based on the time of the appointments to make sure everybody gets there on time. That's our main goal is getting people to their appointments on time. Pick up, I mean, sometimes they do have to wait, but it's not, it's not comparable to like what some other like big cities that they have to wait an hour, two hours. It's, it's you know, it does happen once in a while. I won't say it doesn't, but it happens because of 
you know, either um, somebody else is late. That's another reason we tell them to be on time because they end up making somebody else late for their appointment if they're not ready. What happens if they're held at one of those doctor's office or something? Nope. Well, I also advise all our riders that use transporta our transportation for medical appointments that they should be notifying their medical offices that, hello, I'm, I have an appointment at one o'clock. I'm using public transportation. I need to be out of here by this time because then I am not guaranteed a ride home. And usually medical offices are good about that. But people have to let the offices know that they're using public transportation. So, because we don't like to, we don't like to strand anybody, you know? So um, we did have, and, and, we just recently had somebody that was out in, in um, Meriden and it wasn't her fault. It was the doctor's office and she felt awful. And she kept, she kept calling saying, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. We told her what time she need to be out by. She let the office know the office called. I told them um, they took her in at that time, but they were, it's going to, was still going to be a long time. So the hospital, because she was at Midstate, they arranged for transportation for her home. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she felt bad and she called and apologized. Yeah, but it wasn't her fault. No, it wasn't. Yeah. But she had kept, the driver was waiting for her because she had said, oh, yeah. oh, I'm only going to be this long. And so um, she she apologized. But um, yeah, most people are very good about understanding the, the time constraints. Yeah. Um, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, our commission for Aging Spring Social is Thursday, May 25th from 3.30 to 5.30. Um, the elderly brothers will be back to entertain us. We will have a dinner of pizza, salad, and dessert immediately following the entertainment. If any of our commission for aging members can help with setup, serving, and cleanup, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, just so you know, that day, Victoria and I are in training. We are here, but we're in training from nine to four. And I have a doctor's appointment, so I have to skip out to go to my doctor's appointment, which I made a year ago and I'm not canceling. Um, I do have some uppy kids coming to help, but if anyone can help that day, um, you know, we usually switch over from bingo to the program, then the entertainment. And then I have somebody picking up the pizzas for me. In case I am, um, you know, if I'm running late, I don't want to um, worry about the pizza. So somebody is doing it for me, picking up the pizzas. We'll have everything else ready. But if anyone can help that day, that would be greatly appreciated. And I will ask some of our other members. But um, so I wanted to. to well, usually we clear the room, mm -hmm. and then we set up. We make sure the tables are clean. We put out placemats. Silverware napkins, put a, a decorative thing on the table, and then we let them back in, and then our program will start. Will we have all that? Yeah, we'll have it ready. ready yeah, I'll do it the day before. I'll get it all ready. So, um, and then, and once the entertainment's done, it's just serving, you know, usually it's two pieces of pizza, salad on a plate, and then it's dessert after. And I'll make sure somebody makes the coffee. Or if we have punch, we'll or have a to we have a few because that's the uppy picnic. Mm -hmm. Usually, the people go from here to the uppy picnic. So it, it's the, the girls have reassured me that they do have um, a few students coming to help us. Five thirty, and I think their picnic starts at five. So people can go from here. 5.30 over to the fairgrounds and get their hot dogs. So, yeah, they do it at the fairgrounds now. So, okay. All right. And then the other thing was I wanted, and I didn't include it on here, which I will add. Um, I did this quickly because Jenny had to take my, my laptop for this to set it up. Um, we had our volunteer luncheon, which Barbara came and Kay came. 
Ann and Frank couldn't make it, but um, so I wanted to go over again. Um, we have 45 volunteers that help us on a daily basis, not daily, but a weekly basis here. Um, they help us with coffee hour. Um, they help us with bingo. They help us in the library. Um, they help us at the front desk. There are members of the Commission for Aging. Um, there's those that do tax aid that are volunteers. Um, they help us with setups, cleanups. Um, I'm trying to think of all the folks that they help us decorate. Um, they help do craft classes. So we're very fortunate. Um, oh, we have the knitters. We have the ladies that help at setback. We have the ladies that helped at our open house. And so I quickly figured out the front desk, um, we have five ladies that help us uh, during the week. So they, do, they donate 40 hours a month of their time. Our coffee people, 40 hours a month. Our knitters, 16 hours a month. Our library, six hours a month. Setback, 56 hours a month. Bingo, 104 hours a month. Our commission for aging, 60 hours a year. Our crafters, um, they've done our, our craft classes. We've had uh, three events that somebody has donated their time to do. And our open house, we had 15 volunteers for four hours, 60 hours. I figured out to be 338 hours per month with at minimum wage, save the town $5,070 in in-kind donation of time. So the town is very fortunate and we are very fortunate that we have volunteers because we could not do it with all our volunteers. And how about the front desk? Is that a part-time position? Only in the morning. Yeah, only in the morning. And those ladies are wonderful. Yeah. The town, um, we can't we can't add any new positions unless we we get the funding from other sources, which is hard to do. I was able to create the part time program coordinator at the time when I did that. I worked with the town saying if I got funding for it to pay for the salary for a year and a half, would the town then assume the salary once that year and a half was up and they at that time did agree. So we do have the salary for the part-time program coordinator. But every year when we get our um, told to make our budget, we are told we cannot add any new positions. So that's why, and we need volunteers because we can't do it. I mean, there's only Victoria and I, we got our front desk, which is only three hours a day. And the other only full-time employee is Joe, and he's out on the road. And he does help us out at times if we're if he's here. Um, his other job is custodial. But at times, he's jumped on the phone or helped us with the bus schedule. Um, but, yeah, we're very fortunate, very blessed to have our volunteers because we couldn't do it without them. We couldn't do all that we do. No. No. Nope. And the volunteers are always so Pleasant, yeah pleasant, yeah you know? right because they enjoy it here and they want it they want to see it be successful so <laughs> excuse me i wanted to share that um and as of today we have 100 1162 seniors that have their key tax <clears throat> that is an increase of 43 since our last meeting in march which is a big jump. So from March, our meeting in April and May, we have 43 new members. So, yes. Um, well, during when we were having like taxes and energy assistance and um, anybody that comes for like blood pressure, anybody that uses our service, any service here, we require them to fill out a participant form. Even if they're coming 
once a week because we need to show the town that people are using our services. Um, you know, and that, you know, we, we are doing a plethora of different things here. Um, not what we hear, our little rumors. And you know, I think that everyone that comes here is such a community. Right. Everybody just likes to come and- Yeah, and right, and right, and right. So, you know what's going on. Right, you met at craft class the other day. Did you meet Gail? She's a new member. She just loves it here. And she's she's tried, she's trying everything. And she she said, I wish I had joined sooner. And the new part-time person who had the money, but not the person. Right. Our our part-time program coordinator um uh uh quit after three weeks, so or without somebody right now. So I'm, I think I'm gonna get like a sub during the summer just to fill in and help us. And then come the fall, we'll put it back out there. And we're also reaching out to um, colleges that have like gerontology programs to see if there's any college students that are going in the field um, that would be interested in a part-time job. Very good. Yeah, right, right, yep. right. So. Yes, we have to be very innovative. Yes, <laughs> true. Any questions? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Um, senior housing report. Yes, you have a report for us? What I have is like a lot of questions. Oh, <laughs> We're, I, I, I don't get much of an answer, although Liz was there today, but I was. I was just so tired of fighting with my father and my kids that I just didn't really feel like I wanted to get into it with her. And I don't know if these are questions I should actually ask. We want to know, at least what I hear from the other residents, why they did that lottery. Was it to bring in people with a higher income? It's the way the state makes them work. I was not happy with the lottery. I thought it was first come, first serve. You know, when you put your well, name on the, the list. people on the list, because some of them have been waiting, Marlene has been waiting two years for those. Yep. Or, and Frank has been, Frank was the next one. There's a Frank that was the next one who's been to Avery. He was the next one on the list. And we have two ladies that volunteer here who've been on the list a while. Arlene and yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand how that works. I questioned Joe about that. She said that's the way the state makes them work it because I always thought it was once you put your name on the list and they work sure. down the list. Mm -hmm. I did too. That's not the way it is. All right. Well, here's another question. We are not a HUD facility, right? We are not. We are not a HUD facility. No. We don't get any money from HUD. No. You do get there is sub subsidizing. There's some for Marjorie Moore. Yes, the, 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 what, what I would call the, uh, what they pay, right? There is subs. There is that. There is subsidizing from state and federal for both. That's why they have to include people not just from Berlin or not just from yeah. Connecticut, from everywhere, because they do get some type of funding. Well, we understand that. And yeah, so we don't have that much problem with that. What I do have a problem with is people taking 35 year olds. They have to. But we should, how, is there any limit on how many you have to have? We now have like four or five people that are under 65 or 60 even. They have to. Isn't, it, isn't there a criteria for like disability or? Right. Mental They're young, disabled. disabled. Yeah, disabled. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, they have They're to. Disabled, they have to be able to. Right. Let them access. The, Housing. Yes. Or the application I, form. I, I yeah. Something, something's not right. We're getting a very uneven mix and a very unpleasant right now. So I'm tired of the people they bring in and then the kids, they, there's one woman, her kids come in and fight all the time. Their daughter comes in all the time and fight with her. They're screaming and yelling. They're right down at Fox and Lisa. She hears it all the time. And you can't say anything. I have said something. I said something to Liz and I said something to Joe Majorski. And then and, they and told how me do they that, get these people out once they get them in? Well, that's the problem. Once they're in, to get them out, 
and there should be there should be an accommodation so this woman's child should not be able to stay there for weeks at a time. Yeah, she should with her boyfriend. You know. Have you gone to Joe? I went to Joe. No, but I'm saying to Ann. He has liked me. He doesn't like me, and he never has liked me. He gave me a crash of anger when I wrote him that letter about the complaint about the heating and stuff. And, you know, Sharon told me that I should send them a letter, uh, an email, write them an email. Right. And I write an email, and nobody has the email. They don't have it. They're all over the city. It's like me that don't like emails. So I ended up sending them a letter, and then I got I got a very bad blowback. Did he ever apologize? He just chewed me out. I left him. back to the apartment and shoot Sharon out. <laughs> well, he's coming. Have you gone to the meeting? Their I, meetings? I, yeah, I went to that one. Um, I don't think I've gone to another one since I've watched. But I just, you know. Well, I would go to the whole board. What board? I was going to say they have a board, board and that's the Joe is the chair of it. But yeah, they, yeah, there's Joe, there's um, Sandra. Sandy yeah. is the resident liaison. Yeah. And there's Michelle. She's not taking the notes anymore. I get beyond her. So they have somebody from um, DeMarco takes the notes. There's John, isn't there, O'Brien? Yeah, he came, he, the time I was there, he came in on. Oh, they don't meet in person. They have, they have the meeting. They have the meeting. Well, they, I would, I when I was there, somebody from Demarco, um, gentleman John, he was on. He did a, he was on the video on the city, and then there was Sandy. And there wasn't very many other people. Now there was all of them were on the meeting. That was in your meetings, so they. What about your letter upset him? Huh? What was upsetting about your letter? He just didn't like that I sent it. As far as I can tell, nothing that What I do you mean you sent it to people? Oh, you sent it to all it the residents? The rug that is absolutely disgusting. I know, but who did you send the letter to? Each one of the members of the board. Okay. And he was upset about that? Yes, very. Did he say why? Yes, because he said he didn't have any advance notice. It's basically what I got. You know, he said, you shouldn't be notifying people about stuff like this. I mean, it was a board. Right, it's a board. You're I notifying them of... I said it, I was going to stay away. Huh. Well, he shouldn't have... I mean, if... He if... was very, very angry. You could ask Lisa about it. She was there with me. She and Lisa, she and I and two people from our divorce showed up to the And I got chewed out. And who was at your meeting? Huh? Who was at your I would have dressed him. No, he was doing the meeting. He was the meeting. Oh, was Nobody stepped in and said, Joe, you shouldn't be speaking to her that way. To me, as as a tenant, you have every right to ask a question. Yeah. And they might be able to say to you, Well, I don't have the answer right now, but I'll look into it. And if they have nothing, I would not prepare for that. Oh no, nobody would be. We would have a discussion instead. Of nobody. He, he talked to me for about twenty-five minutes. Nobody, nobody would expect that. But to me, if you're you're doing what you're supposed to do, then you should have no issue with people questioning you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, when you work with the public, you have to expect that people are going to have questions. People are going to have issues. Yeah. They might agree with you. They might not agree with I you. I don't think that anything right? that I said in that letter was wrong. I complained about the blog. Right. I complained about the fact that the heating is all messed up. Back there. Even Liz today, she comes, she says, I get complaints about the heating at that. So we went down. The thing reads 70. It said at 70, the temperature in there was 82. Oh. With a blower bowl right in front of my door. You would think that you would, they would want to correct that. I don't know who else, who you could go to that oversees them. I don't know. I, I don't know. But I know as a tenant, 
you have a, you have rights. Yeah. As a renter. Yeah, I know. I'm probably gonna have to. No, well, yeah, right. But the management company works for the housing authority. Right. They were brought on after that and, and we brought, issue. You know, since long ago. Married too, we have no Don't get me wrong. I like. Her. I like. Her. But she's not. She's working for Demarco. You can't get her. She's almost never there. She said we were going to have a, a girl to come. We, they hired the new girl who's supposed to be coming down at ER Contact. Right. I have not. She is supposed to come on Monday and Friday. I asked her today. I said, is she coming in? Now, Monday and Friday is the day I'm gone. I'm not there Monday and Friday. So there's no way I'm going to find out she's going there. Nobody seems to have seen her. Oh, I've because seen I her. Right now, she's trying to work on the research. And the, she's going to be doing the... Um, Redeterminations? No, she's all on your rent. That when you get in the fall, the pay not pay. Oh, she does. Oh, renters rebate. She's gonna be doing that because Jamie said it wasn't her job. I mean, no, she. She might be right. No, it's Jamie's job to do the applications for the renters rebate because she's the one that is. Uh, authorized by the state to do it. Okay, well, I haven't heard anything. It's, Jamie's probably saying that it's not her place to work with each of the individual residents getting their paperwork together. Oh, okay. Oh, See, okay. Mary, oh. Mary used to do that, which made it much easier because I used to do the appointments. You'd go in, Mary'd give you the paperwork, boom, you're done. Yeah. Exactly. You know, but if and you're. Yeah. And, right. And I, I think Robin is going to be Robin is the new Jamie. Jamie is now Doug Truett. Right. Oh, I know that. So I think Robin is doing Robin. the renter's rebates. Because that has to be done by a town employee. See, this the problem is a lot of people and, and, and people get started going. You don't know what they're gonna do. Don't listen. I was, go, I was stunned when go. I saw that you could have $62,000 to live there. If you had $62,000, would you be living there? That's the income requirement? Yes. I'm going, how did it? I didn't think it was that high. Maybe they raised it. Not that that's the income Right. Now, Marjorie Moore, you cannot, have, you cannot move in there if you have more than $14,000. A year, at least that's what it was when I applied. Oh, I would think it's higher. It might have, it might have gone up some since then because that cost is so high. But so then we're trying to figure out if maybe that's why they decided to do the lottery was to get so many people in there. I mean, it's not like they could be people. I am sorry, they didn't pick them. They took them and they threw them in a bowl and then take the names out. How did they get there? How did they determine who was going to go into that bowl? Whoever's on the list. No. What well, you really think that guy from Florida is on the list? So maybe yeah, whoever's on the way I understand it. But, but whoever is on the list gets put in the bowl and then they do pick out the names. I don't know. I really think that's the lottery. That's the lottery. I said to Joe, I didn't think that was a fair way to do it, but he said. That's the way the state requires. But well, they should be able the to get their questions is, answered. Is the state really giving us any money? The sure as hell doesn't look like it to me. I don't know. Is, are the state what? Joe would have to answer that. Is the state giving us money? The state. All I get from Joe is that all I got from Joe when I was at that meeting was he said, we don't have money enough to run this. The yeah. rent we're getting from you guys is not enough to run this place. So you better not be. Basically, what he was saying is you better not complain. Yeah. He was telling me that the uh, state, they don't come up to what it costs to run the, run the place. He did tell me that. Right, but then before they used to write grants and they would get other funds. Because I know they got funds to replace refrigerators. They got funds to replace air conditioners. And they do have money coming from a grant that's going to replace that carpet because I do carpet on that carpet. 
And yeah, they go out and got the money from that. Yeah. So they get I would think that's considered federal housing. Both of them. Because their rents are reasonable. They have to be getting some subsidy to keep the rents what they are. Right. That's why I would consider it federal housing where there's there's money that goes to federal housing. Get your questions ready because I'm going to invite him to our Zoom meeting. I was going to invite him today, but I decided to wait till June because I'm still waiting for that ground to be broken over there for senior housing. So I thought if I wait till June, he'll have more information for us. Right. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> June, he will be our guest. Yeah. Bring your questions. Bring your questions. And do it in this forum. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. if he speaks to you that way, then I will say something. Yeah. Well, I will speak up. I, I Nobody should have to speak to you that way, asking questions mm -hmm. or writing a letter about your concerns about your housing. I mean, it just, it just makes some of us feel very uncomfortable because now. Now you're afraid to ask. Well, we're not even any kind of a good mix anymore. We lost so many tenants. And the ones that are replacing them. Well, uh, that they have no say in. I know, but I mean, they have to. It, it would be different if we were a, if this is the whole thing. If this was a 300 apartment building, you know what we would want to be. Right. But when you only have 30 apartments, it makes it very hard to have all these different tenants with different needs. <laughs> Well, I spoke to Liz about that. I don't think that people should feel threatened in their place no. where they live. And if that one apartment has problems, then they should address that. And then they have to either move or there has to be something done. Because they would have to evict them. That's against. Which is tough. Yes. That, and and that, that takes those, forever. That can be very difficult. No, it yeah. doesn't. It takes three months. Well, yeah, three months and three months and three months. It goes by fast. If you're feeling threatened, that has to happen. Yeah. And people have told me they do feel threatened. You know? Well, that's my that was my one of my other questions because I'm going to ask him what responsibility does housing take for listening to complaints about tenants that are there and addressing them. Good question to ask them. Did I have Liz here that night? No, just uh, the worst of it. I mean, I, I don't really fault Liz. She's doing what DeMarco Hart is. She's not doing what Pete Berlin House right. would like to do. But that's where the drawing line comes to DeMarco Shelter. Well, we've got money enough to do this. And we've got to know that we don't still have to take the house and house and stand in contact with the folks. June would be a good place for you. And make sure that night that other residents are here. Yeah, I'm going to try to get some more people. And tell them that they have to, if they have questions, they should write them. Well, that's all. the whole thing. You try to tell, I try to tell the people there, you should come to me. If you need to show anything. Yeah, all right, sure. Nobody ever shows up. No. No, they came the last time when Joe was here. Some of them were. Yeah. yeah. When Joe was here, they came. Yeah. Yeah, that. yeah that was a good turnout. When he comes in June, they'll have to come again. And and people did ask questions that night. Yeah, that was a pretty good, yeah, yeah. that was a pretty good case. And the new person that's working only part-time, I think she works a day and a half a week, is Darlene Latizio. Yeah. And she's yeah. working with the, with the house for the... Yeah, yeah, she was supposed to be, I think she was the one that was supposed to come out to the office. Yeah. People say they haven't seen her. I have. I haven't seen her in the building, but she, I think she was there once. Well, I do know who she is, but I, I'm not sure. She's only here a day and a half. Yeah. I've seen her because she's come over here when she's been over there. She asked me if she should come tonight. And I said, you really don't need to come tonight as long as you're taking questions or doing the work orders, taking on the work orders and passing that along. Oh, Darlene asked you? Uh, yeah. She called me. And then I told her, she had she had some questions for me, so I told her she had to call Doug Stewart. I didn't realize that Doug had retired. Yeah, Doug retired. Oh my God! So who's in his place now? Jamie Miller. 
And then Robin Evans is the the new social worker. No, it's Doug, Doug yes, Doug retired. Doug. End of April. My only other comment that I would make about housing is we are heading for disaster. No, we are. We are heading for disaster. This whole state. We don't have anywhere near the amount of housing that's going to be required from all the people that are retiring. There's no housing out there for them. It's all been taken up by these by the young people that are so far. Need housing and a lot of the, the housing that the, the state used to have in the cities for the elderly has all been transferred because they thought this was a good idea to house these kids there so they didn't have to open up special things for the kids. So now you're going to have all those kids in these, all these buildings taking up a lot of the apartments that the elderly should have been able to get, especially anybody that's retiring right about now. Their social security wasn't high enough in the beginning to really save a lot of them. So they, they're retiring, they're just living on social security, and it's not even not where, enough for where, housing anyway, not a not a price that they're going to save. What kids are they putting into this housing? The young people, the young people who have mental issues. They're either mental issues or disabilities from some kind of a disease. My grandson has my well, I, I guess it's a combination of disease and mental issues. He has um one not bipolar, the no, the other one, schizophrenia. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia. He was not diagnosed until he was almost 22 when they finally decided, oh, we think this kid has schizophrenia. You know. So and then they started treating that housing. Him. Well, they started treating him and they do they do a pretty good job with the treatment. But he can't live on his own. You know, he just falls through the cracks in some of the places that would make it happen. I mean, he might live in an apartment and be fine by himself, but there's nothing to be had. Every time he asks them, they say, well, we're sorry, Kyle, you know, you're know, you down on the list. You're like two or three hundred. Because every single time somebody gets into real crisis, his, his folks threw him out of the house and dumped him out on the street. They would find him out. That's how that works. So he's staying with his mom for now. When his dad retires, they're leaving the state. And at that point, I'm assuming they'll find out. So the family bears no responsibility, but the state has to take over. Well, the family is taking care of it right now. Yeah. But I'm saying once they move out of the state, their responsibility yeah. is done. Yep. And the state has done so. I mean, he could say, I want to go with my mom and dad, but they can't force him to take them. Yeah. I mean, him and his father have never really gotten along. Not the son he wanted. You know, right, we got enough. Yeah. It's hard. We don't know how long this goes I for. I think policy is such an issue all it's, over. It's getting to be very, yes. Okay. Such an issue. We got to move because I don't know how long this takes um, for. Are you, is that it, Ann? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if you send your community agenda, would be my report, and I want you to know that I everybody has a copy of the letter I sent to Kate Wall because we're down a member. Those will not be coming back to you on health issues. Um, I did send her two cards to, from the commission and uh, let her know that we're thinking of her and. Um, I think that I don't know how we'll continue on without, you know, I, I mean, we can continue our commission, but we need to have other people. So if you know of anybody, let me know. Let's do it. When I get home, I'm going to try to call mom and then she's not on the phone. I'm not going to change the word. She was one of the ones who was on the list that she was on. I'll call her and see if she's interested in it. Or if anybody else, yeah, if she knows of anybody that would be. Okay, and the other thing I have to um, talk about is we had a little budget hearing here at the center on April 19th, and we discussed the uh, status of the senior center community center. The mayor was here. 
Uh, someone from the finance board was here, and the person from the finance board said that um, he's happy with this building, and we should be happy to stay here. And the the way it looked, they're leaning. There's nothing in, in writing yet. They're leaning to the Y for that property across from the high school. Um, I said, and he, he, the finance person said, leave the seniors at their present site. The Y, and I told, responded that the Y focuses on child care, not the seniors. So he sees nothing wrong with us staying here. So my suggestion, and the mayor said, I, so I complained about the parking lot that people have to go home because they can't park. And the mayor said, we're gonna to try to do something about that. That will never happen mm -hmm. because we tried to do something about that years ago. We had a petition yeah. signed and nothing will ever happen there. Nope. And the, it belongs to the housing authority. They'll tell you they do not have the money to, you'd have to level that whole parking lot. They're not gonna do that. They can't get rid of that hill. No, of course not. <clears throat> so, I said to him, I'm very disappointed. So he said the project was too big, what the, what was proposed for the senior center, community center. And that's why the finance board still is holding on to it. I said, then why didn't they call that special advisory meeting that we had? And we never had that conversation. Why didn't you have this conversation with us? And uh, he said, oh, we'll we'll do that. Well, when this is going to happen, I have no idea. They're just set on the why. And so I said to him, when it was all over and done with, I said, you know what? Send it to referendum. Let the people decide. Because he said to me, I'll, you'll be happy if it, you'll be disappointed if it goes to the red referendum because they'll shoot it down like they did the police station. I said, you're comparing apples to oranges here because. The police station was not a good location. That's a different story. This is a good location, and the people, it covers all demographics. Mm -hmm. So let the people decide. Right. I have a question. The money that, the money that, the money that we got from Joe, was that for housing or the senior center? That was for the senior center. All right. Now, here's the question. If that was for the senior center, can the town just get rid of get tell can the town sell that piece of property or give that piece of property? Why? Or does the town do the townspeople have anything to do with it? Because a lot of the people that I talk to don't want to buy either. We may not want we may not want a bigger senior center and spend a lot of more money, but we certainly don't want a Y stuck on a piece of property that's a big part of Berlin and they're gonna get it for a dollar a year. A dollar, yes. No, I don't. I can't see it for fifty years. Yep. For fifty years, they're going. We're going to give them that big piece of property in Berlin, and why? The only ones that can go to the Y are the people that can afford to pay the what? What is it? Two hundred and fifty dollars a year to join. And every program that you run, you're going to pay. Well, you, I know we pay Selena something, but it's nowhere near what you're going to pay at the Y. Hmm. Yep. It would also be a tri-town Y, because the Y is not Berlin. Kentington anymore. It's Berlin, New Britain, and Meriden. Yeah. I think I would just go before town council. You'd have to speak up. It's interesting to me. But come why, up on the town agenda. The, the why is even considered because the state gave the why a million dollars to update their their facility in New Britain. Now, the facility in New Britain is not being cared for. How are they going to take on another right. project? Right. And if they can't manage their budget better than that, are they going to manage it really good when they set, stick that big one here in Berlin? No, I don't think so. Because they'll have the building and we'll have the expense because eventually it will get to the point where Berlin is going to have to subsidize some of it, you know? What? Of the why? Because no, the Berlin wouldn't. Well, how if a building. Is That's big, why the, 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 the mayor wants it because they would do a capital. Well, what are they fundraiser? And that they want it because the Y would pay for everything. But if the Y can't <clears throat> pay for 
what they have in New Britain, how would they do this? They do, what are those called? Capital uh, the campaigns. Yeah. Campaigns. And they get donations, donors. So why should you do that? <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. That's why I said take out that money for New Britain. That's why you have to ask the mayor. So I said to him, you know, then put it to referendum. However, we can't go to referendum. This came at the meeting. We can't go to referendum saying, oh, this is going to cost them too much money and we can't do this. And we can't. You have to be fair with the people and let them know how good a facility this is going to be for the town. That's never going to happen. I know it's not. That's yeah. why the people that are involved in it, the swim team, the kids, the seniors, people have to speak up if that ever comes to the referendum. People have, there has to be stuff in the paper. We have to have outreach, you know, and and there's no way, even, you can't even get anything in the paper. Even Joe Majorski yeah. said that to me yeah. today. He says, you can't even put things in the paper. There's no, who reads the paper? You know, I can't tell you how many times I sat down and jotted down things that I'd like to put in it, but they, you have to put your name on it. <laughs> I used to do all kinds of writing when my husband worked for the town and we were younger and you didn't have to put your name on it when stuff was coming to a vote to get money for the fire department. I used to put, I used to put stuff in the paper. <laughs> but then they started making you put your name on it and you say, oh no, I'm going to get myself in trouble. I have something that is legitimate and I think it's worthwhile. I think that people should know. I don't mind having my name put in, but um, I mean, it just is very frustrating. It's very frustrating to be working on this for so long and having yeah, it, it at a standstill. But I want, when I was going through my notes today, Rocky Hill, January 16, 2020, this is from the Harper Current. They passed a plan to build a senior center, community center, and the plan moved forward. That was January of 2020. It's now in full use in Rocky Hill. My as son September. said that is the best place he's ever seen. That's what my son he said. He said, I went in there. He said, Mom, I was stunned. Yep. He said, you should see all the things they have that we could do. That's he said, it's summer. absolutely fantastic. When I retire, I'm going to start going there. He's working like 70 hours a week, so he doesn't get this time to do it. That's what my, my son is now living in Rocky Hill, and he uses the yeah. weight room and everything. And he said it was wonderful. Full use as of September. So in two years, from January 16, 2020, to full use September 2022. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Because their community is progressive. Because Not reactive. Because they <clears throat> From their community. Right. That's what it is. Right. But we are a, we are a reactive community. We are not a progressive community. We don't think about down the road. Down the road. Yeah. Down the road. The Rocky Hill Senior Center Community Center, since they've added on to that, their membership has grown tremendously. Oh. Their programs have grown tremendously. Like what they get for lunch, they get like a hundred people a day for their lunch program. Yeah, because I have and they have a local day. restaurant making their lunches. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh, because wow. the town funded part of that. As part of their budget is to help subsidize those meals. I think they pay, if you're a resident, $4.00. If you're a non-resident, it's like seven dollars, but the meals are are from a local restaurant and they're very good. Yeah. And if you were having a meal at lunch for four dollars and it's a person that lives alone, they could have a nice lunch and then have a sandwich later at home for supper, you know? Yeah. And have their meal. Yep, they they love the lunch program there. But you know, I and I've said this before. A while back, I asked the director in Plainville, how did you get done everything you had to have done? She said, because they have administrative support, which we do not have. So I think that has to be known. I mean, it's just frustrating, you know? Okay, that's my, um, that's that report I have. I talked to Joe Majorski today, and he told me that the council meeting tomorrow night is to move forward the transfer of title 
with a housing authority for the Percival Avenue pro property. And um, hopefully, it uh, includes the demolition of the uh, nightclub. So they're waiting for a ground lease from the town. And if that all moves forward tomorrow, the money is in place. There's no state money because the senior, oh, this is another thing you told No state money is going into this. It's private housing because if you take state money, you have to have family housing, which is probably oh, okay. some of that project to do with that. So if you're private housing, you can have strictly senior. So that's what he so that, that, If they're going to do that, that would make me that happy. That's the new place that needs to be strictly seen up. So he said the developer is ready to go. The money is in place. Three private, they have uh, private investors for seniors 55 and older. And then no state money, I told you that. But the developer has had this money, has been ready to go for a while. The money is in place for a while. Even though the mayor that day said, we're waiting for the money. We're not waiting for the money. The money's in place. So if they move this forward tomorrow night, they can start. That's good. What are they transferring? They have to transfer what the title to the town to the housing authority. Right. The personal Avenue property and the nice It's been a few years. I know it's been crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy. And I said that to Joe Bedorsky. I said I give you a lot of credit because this has just been so long. A couple of the soil samples they made him do three times. Why? Why is that? You know. So anyway, um, he said. So I'm anxious to hear what happens tomorrow night. So maybe, who knows? He said if. The title is transferred, the money is in place. Oh, this is another thing. The developer said, if this doesn't move on, move forward, he wants to move on. He's got other projects to do. So we don't want to move, move the developer, you know? So I'm hoping everything goes through tomorrow night and the title is transferred to the housing authority and we'll be all set. And he said, if that happens, Hopefully in June they will be able to start. So that's my two weeks. Does anybody have any questions? No. Okay. Is there any old business to come before the meeting? Nope. Any new it's business? Mostly all old. I know it's <laughs> all old. <laughs> How old? A long time old. Ancient. I know. Uh, any new business? Yeah. Oh, what's that? Question for Tina. Oh. Is there any way that we could arrange to have morning coffee a half an hour longer so the people coming in for the 10 o'clock classes would have the ability to have a coffee before they start? Well, usually they put the coffee because the volunteers only they work eight to 10. So they usually, if there's coffee left, they put it in the crafts. There's not usually coffee left by that time. Well, so what's what day? Wednesdays? No, not for me. I bring my own tea bag. Well, so who's asking? Who's asking about the coffee? Oh, some of the girls that are in their crafty knitters. Okay. Um, usually I see, I've seen them getting it. Helena and and Roberta. Because they know to run, run down as soon as they get in the door. Right. And half of the time. Well, the thing is, is we have to be out of there. Uh, That's another issue. Okay. We got to be, because right? the lunch people come in usually a little after 10, and then that's their kitchen. Okay. So, and usually though, if there's coffee left, yeah, they, they put in the craft and they can help themselves to coffee. Um, the only thing is a lot of times um, we don't want to make another pot of coffee and then we just dump it. We waste a lot of coffee here. Have to waste a lot of coffee. We do though. If you put it in the craft, you don't have to dump it, right? No, but I'm saying 
at the end of the day, if nobody drinks that crap, oh, it day. gets dumped. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, sometimes if there's a lot of coffee, I send it next door with you, Pierce, and he'll go around yeah. because I hate to waste it. Oh, I don't like it. You know, like that's why the, the the volunteers will ask, "Should I make another pot?" And I said, "Well, you know, do you think you're going to get anybody else? If not, no, because." One, the coffee is expensive and the cups are expensive. And we're going through coffee cups quickly because serving coffee five days a week, coquino, bingo, setback, all using cups. So we do have the Keurig though, which they can use. Cause like my photography guys on Friday afternoon, if they want a cup of coffee and there's no coffee in the craft, they use the Keurig and I bought K cups. Yeah, it's 50 cents to cover the cost of the K cups mm -hmm. and they could make a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. That's what we don't call the K cups, does it? Yeah. 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 If you buy it in bulk. yeah. So there is that. They can have that. They could have that between 10 and 10 30. Yeah. Cup of yeah. So you need to put that in a. Well, one, the other, the other, the other issue, Kay, is I don't want a lot of people going in the kitchen because I have thefts happening. Okay. So usually like for Pokino, one of the Pokino lady goes in, makes the coffee, serves the coffee. Same thing with like bingo. One person goes in, makes it, somebody serves it. I don't like, because what happens is people get a little bold and they start going into things and I've had boxes of cookies stolen. Oh, I believe that. So I don't want a lot of people in the kitchen. And one, per the health department, when the lunch people are in there, nobody's supposed to be in the kitchen, especially when they're serving at noon. I don't even like to go in there when they're in there. To get you get in their way or if they're trying you know to do stuff so um the knitters start at 10 right yep. so they should be good if they're coming in right at 10 if yeah. they're coming at 10 30 no or they have to try to come a little early to get a cup of coffee right <laughs> well how many are how many of them are Looking for coffee. Alina, Roberta, Hugo, uh, Sandy. Now okay, so who gets who I gets here early? Who gets here early? Yeah. Which of the one lady gets here before ten or ten o'clock? We have one lady that normally is very early who has not been here for five weeks. Wednesday will be the sixth week. Who's that? Lacey. Oh. Well, I'm saying if, if one of them took, you know, took the ownership of coming before 10, we made up a craft. They took their fixings and cups and brought them to the craft room so they could have coffee. They used to do that. The crafters used to do that. They'd have to take ownership of that. Right, they'd have to take ownership of it. Right, right. Like the bridge ladies on Mondays wanted us to do their, they wanted us kind of like wait on them, you know, with their coffee and their pastries or whatever. And it was like, like, we don't do that for the setback people. We, we're not going to do it for you. We don't just don't have, not that, you know, <coughs> we'd love to wait on you, but we don't have the time. And if I do it for one group, I got to do it for everybody. Yeah. So the setback people are gracious enough. They make enough coffee for themselves and for the bridge ladies. So when they're done serving their group, they let the bridge ladies know and then they come get theirs, and then it's their responsibility to clean up because we're the last one choosing it. And they have to bring their own 
snacks. Like the setback people, they buy their own snacks. So, I mean, if they forget it, I'm more than gracious enough to give them something that I have in the freezer or whatever. But um, they got to take a little ownership because we just don't have the, we just don't have the time. You know, yeah. You're not here to wait on them, you know? Yeah, so if they want coffee, that's fine. You know, just like the photography guys, they go in to make their cup of curry if they want coffee, if there's none left. But the ladies are more than welcome. If somebody comes early and that person be the steward of coffee, that'd be fine. How about the guys who come in in the morning? Coffee is made for them, they just help themselves. No, they don't. Oh, they we don't. serve. We, during the, from the start of the pandemic, we serve. Oh, okay. We serve because I don't want everybody touching. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, like, you know, coffee hour we do we serve them with tongs and you know what i mean nobody's touching yeah. Yeah. setback they have to have individually wrapped refreshments they can't bring baked goods from home you know we went to keep everybody safe and we've continued that way hey, so the rules and everybody has to follow yeah right yep i have one other thing on your new business the newsletter um I noticed that we're getting, we don't get the newsletter for, you know, already events have gone on in the beginning of the newsletter. Um, are they just not looking at our time? Well, la this month, uh, Victoria was sick when it was, it yeah, and then it gets sent. But then we also, uh, I don't know if it was last month, they had a um, a printing issue. Oh, okay. It took them longer. We try to get it so that we get it for the first yeah, of the month. Because you already we, have events. <laughs> we also try not to schedule the first week of the month uh -huh. for that reason. Yeah. Um, but yeah, last one was um, Victoria was out and she does the, I do my little part. She does the mm -hmm. thing. So it was delayed then. And then the week, the month before April, they mm -hmm. took uh, LPI. It took them longer to uh, to print it. There was some issue because usually they their turnaround time is quick because they're in Cromwell. Yeah, because usually they have it. Yeah, by the yeah, first yeah. Week. But we will keep an eye on that. Okay. Is there any other new business? Oh, well, then we'll all be here. Well, at least we'll try to be here for our event on the twenty fifth, right? Yes. Okay. Please. Okay. It's the it's the nineteenth. Oh, okay. oh, but I think we're close. June nineteenth. Oh. That's a holiday now. Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Oh, really? Oh. So what do we do? Go the next week? Or you could go the week before. Yeah, no, yeah. The week, the week so then you'd have to do it the 26th. June 26th. Or if you want to do it the, on a Tuesday, the next day, the 20th. It's up to you, up to your group. But the yeah, Juneteenth is a holiday. Yeah. I think we should do the 26th. Okay. And we have to let you know, Kate. Will you let Kate know? Or you want me to? I can let her know. All right. Very good. Um, I'll write myself a note for tomorrow. Let Kate. Any other new business? Otherwise, we'll have a motion to adjourn. All right. All right. Thank you. Good meeting. June, what was it, Barb? Okay.